Welcome to Adventures in Plan 9. In these videos I'll be messing around with operating systems based on Plan 9 from Bell Labs. Plan 9 was originally developed by the creators of Unix at Bell Labs to be the successor to Unix. And like their original efforts in Unix, Plan 9 was used as a laboratory for doing computer research. Plan 9 was not really intended to be a finished product to be sold to average consumers. Several forks of Plan 9 exist as one-off research projects hosted by various universities. Some were even deployed to government supercomputers. However, the CIA will neither confirm nor deny its use of Plan 9. Some Plan 9 systems out there are not forks, but more like museum pieces. Efforts to just maintain the original system with very minor patches. Consumer-grade product was eventually released by Bell Labs called Inferno. Like Plan 9, it could be cross-compiled to run on a variety of architectures, used on embedded systems, and included a write-once, run-anywhere, Java-like programming system called Limbo. However, it was released around the same time as Java, and Java ended up winning that space. While Inferno is still available, it pretty much exists in that museum piece space. The system I'll mostly be using for these videos is Ninefront. Ninefront is maintained by people who want to run more modern hardware, but were frustrated by the slow pace of patches and the legacy code base. Some of the commands have been re renamed so as to not collide with the original legacy code still out there. And I'll try to make note of when I'm using a specifically Ninefront version of a command. While you can easily load up Plan 9 system into a virtual machine and poke around at it, Plan 9 was intended to be part of a network of machines. By itself, a single Plan 9 system is just a curiosity. Luckily, even in this time of chip shortages, retired office computers can be found cheap all day long on eBay. And Plan 9 was originally written to be both usable on the simple desktop computers of the 1990s, while also taking advantage of the multi-CPU servers available at the time. In these videos, we'll be using a combination of old Dell Optiplexes, Raspberry Pis, and some virtual machines. For now, I'll get started installing a standalone, single-user, 9-front system on one of these Dell Optiplex 9020s. Alright, this is what 9-front will look like when you boot it up off a USB drive. And I'll cover a couple basics here real quick before we get started. So if you right click out in the middle of the desktop here, a little menu will pop up. If you select new, you'll get a little crosshairs for your mouse cursor. You right click again and you can sweep out a box. When you let up, that'll become a new terminal window. To get rid of it, you right click again, select delete, get a little different crosshairs. You right click on the window and it removes it. If you left click when it's like this, it goes away. So you have to remember whatever button you start a command with is the one you have to finish it with. The other thing to keep in mind before we get started is how do we stop? So there's a couple peculiar things about Plan 9 that differs from other systems. In most other systems, you do Control C to stop something that's running, but that doesn't work here. Instead, we use the Delete key, and that stops it. It will also work in a lot of graphical applications too. So if you don't know how to exit something, you hit the delete key. And there we go. When we want to reboot the system or shut it down, we use FS halt. That'll stop the disks and everything. And in most modern systems, this will also tell the motherboard to power down. We can also add a dash R if we want to reboot. So we're going to do that now. All right, starting the system with uh, nine front on a thumb drive. All right, it's asking where do we want to boot off of? Uh, the stuff in the brackets 
is the default options, and this is off dev SDU with some numbers here. That's the USB drive, so we'll hit enter to start off that. Uh, we'll take the default user Glenda, and we'll also just go with the defaults for the monitor. You can enter in whatever works for the whatever monitor you have plugged in, and PS2 mouse. And here we are at the desktop. Let's go ahead and resize this. And we'll begin the install, which is inst slash start. All right, first we'll be choosing the file system we want to use. Uh, we're going to go with HJFS because it's a little easier to use. It only uses one partition. All right, we'll select the disk partition. SDE0 is the internal hard drive, so we'll start with that. We have some partition already on here, so we can't take the default of just hitting write and quit. H will bring up a little help menu. So we're going to delete the existing partition. Uh, let's write that and print to see what we have. All right, we just have an empty space here. We'll add our own and we'll use up the whole disk. All right. Quit. All right, next is prep disk. We'll use our new partition we just set up. And these are going to be the default partitions it puts on. The 9FAT is a small fat partition used for holding the kernel and some uh, boot configuration. And VRAM is used for authentication stuff later. And FS is where the files will actually be stored. So we'll go ahead and take the defaults, so we'll write and quit. Mount our new file system here. And that's where it is. The HJFS uses some of the system memory for a cache, and we'll just accept the defaults on that. And Ream is formatting, so let's go ahead and format the new file system. You can see up here that it's already use that chunk of memory and it's also done things like add Glenda to the file system so that Glenda can have uh, its own files. All right, next config distribution. We'll be installing it locally off the USB drive. Uh, we will just go ahead and go with uh, automatic DHCP network configuration. All right, next up here, um, we can just go ahead and use the default of mounting off the slash here root because we're already running a system and it has all the files on it. And next we'll begin to copy. And this part will take a few minutes, thumb drives aren't all that fast. Um, unfortunately, we don't get any kind of like status bar or anything. You can keep an eye on the uh, stats thing here to make sure that's actually doing stuff. And I'm just going to head and jump to whenever it's finished. Okay, the files are done copying. Next step is NDB setup. That's for network database. So this is going to be the network settings. I'm going to give the system a name. Since this is a demonstration, I'm going to name my system Demo. Time zone setup. So I'm here on the west coast, so I'm going to use Pacific. 
boot setup. Like I said, the nine fat partition is where the boot stuff's going to live. So let's go ahead and say that. And the system's just going to run nine front. So I'll go ahead and write to the master boot record and set it active. And there we go. We're all done. Gonna hit enter and the system will reboot. And then you just pull the thumb drive out and let it boot off the hard drive. So here we go. All right, this time it's asking where to boot from, and the new default is SDE0, which is the internal hard drive. So we'll hit enter. We're still gonna use Glenda, and it won't ask for the monitor or mouse settings because it saved uh, what we'd entered during the install. All right, and here we are. You see the name of the system's changed, so we're running demo here. Let's make sure that the networking is on. And there it is. Now we have a basic Plan 9 install using 9front.